Hey guys, today I'm going to be analysing chapters 13 to 16 of Awesome. So to start with, um, Yona was obviously very sick and bleeding, so Barry asks Paul if he could take him to the vet. Paul doesn't want to because he knows that it's going to be expensive and he thinks that the, be- that the vet won't be able to save Yona. So he says that he will get him a new dog. But Barry reminds him and he says that he made that promise 12 years ago and he never actually got Barry the dog. So he broke his promise then and Barry believes that he is going to break his promise now. Barry gets very angry when he says this and he calls him a drunk clop, which is like a drunk. And he asks him about all the marks and the tattoos that are all over his body. Barry leaves and he takes Jonah to the vet in Humansdorp, so that is the closest town to where they are staying. And her name is Dr. Greta Hakkinen. Um, she says that they need to do x-rays and an operation which will cost 6,000 rand. She also requires that Barry pays a 2,000 rand deposit. So he goes and he draws 1,500 rand out his own bank. Then he goes to sell his... Um, items at a pawn shop in order to get the other 500 rand. So he goes and he sells his sunglasses and his watch to get that extra money. Just this action shows that Barry is already changing from the person that he was because he used to be very selfish and he would spend all of his extra money that he got on um, weed and drugs and going out but now he is spending it on Yona and it's quite a bit of money that he's taking out of his own account. Um, as he's talking to Dr. Greta, she says that Yona is very lucky because Labradors, which is the dog that Yona is, are golden retrievers. They are very good swimmers and they can survive for long periods of time in cold water. So Yona was very lucky and that's the reason why he's in such good condition, condition because those kinds of dogs can actually survive harsh conditions in water. She also says that Labradors are very good family dogs and she promises to do her best on him and to help him survive. Barry leaves the vet and goes back to his car. But while he's walking in the streets, he sees lots of people gaping at him and looking at him with a worried look on their faces. Eventually, he looks into the store um, window and he can see his reflection in that. He sees that he has lots of cuts all over his face and it obviously looks very worrying. Um, While he's walking in the streets, he sees a Nigerian uh, drug dealer and he is tempted to buy weed, but instead he buys a collar for Yona. And this once again shows that he is changing from the person that he was before. And instead of prioritizing drugs, he is prioritizing another, not not a person's life, but another thing's life. When he comes home, he is feeling very down, obviously because of Yona and because we know that the man that Theo hit is in a lot of pain. Um, So he thinks that weed is the only thing that helps him because he can't seem to feel happy. When Barris gets home, he also talks to his dad and his father tells him that when he dies, he will inherit the land that they are living on now and the farm. But Barry says that he prefers the city life anyways, and he doesn't want the land. Paul also says that Vera is his soulmate. Barry goes and he calls his mom to ask for money in order to pay the vet, because he's only got 2,000 rand for the deposit for the operation and the x-rays. He still needs 4,000 rand in order to pay the rest of the bills. But Barry's mom is very angry because he's asking about money for, say, to save this dog's life, But he hasn't even asked about the man that Theo rode over. And his mom thinks that he should be more concerned about the man than about the dog. Next, he calls Floris. But it is not Floris who answers the phone. His dad does. And remember, his name is Charles. So he says that he is not allowed to speak to Floris or Theo. And he warns him that he is not, um, well, he warns him against testifying against Theo in court. He is warning him because, first of all, he has a background with drugs, therefore his testimony will not be seen as reliable or trustworthy. And he also tells him that his father has a criminal record and was sent to prison because he had killed a man. And um, Barry's did not know this, he is only finding out now. So Charles is saying that if he testifies, he will not be taken seriously because of his background with drugs and also because his dad has a criminal record. Barry also bumps into the boy who had taken his clothes. Um, he finds out that his name is Philly Boyson, 
And the boy says, I put it in inverted commas on the slides, but he's basically saying that find his keepers. He doesn't feel sorry. And he says that since he found the clothes, he gets to keep them. And he doesn't give him his clothes back. He also confronts Paul when he gets home over the murder that he just found out about. And Paul admits that he was sentenced to six years in jail and released after four years on parole. And now this is the reason why he had disappeared. So he did not just leave Vera and go find another woman or another family. He, had, he went to jail and Vera did not tell him this in order to protect Barry's from um, thinking badly of his father. When Barrys wakes up, he sees that Paul's not there anymore. He sees a painting that's been thrown around and they also the bottle of brandy that Paul keeps under his mattress is not there anymore. So we can just assume from here that Paul felt very remorseful about Barrys finding out about him going to jail and he got angry and embarrassed and he threw a bit of a fit and threw his painting around and now he is drinking again. And then just one thing to know is that the person who Barry sold his goods to to get money at the pawn shop, his name is Wolfie Wolfart. Barry walks into the um, room that Paul is in where he normally does his work. And he finds the brandy bottles there on the table and it is three quarters full. This obviously implies that Paul has been drinking. But Barry warns Paul against drinking anymore because... Remember, he put the rat poison into the bottle. And even though it was only a little bit, if he drinks the whole bottle, he will ingest quite a lot. And this also shows that Barry's, even though he is so angry at Paul because he didn't want to take the dog to the vet, and also about finding out that he killed a man, he still cares about him. Paul then warns Barry's that the drinking makes him very aggressive. And before he chases Barry's out, Barry's looks around and he sees that there are photos everywhere, some that he hasn't seen ever. And one of them especially that stands out to him is a shirtless man carrying a child on his back. And it looks like him and Paul. But at this point, Paul gets very angry and he chases Barry's out. Then an out's following morning and Steph and Olga arrive. They have a fish that Steph had shot with his pale giver. Later that day, Olga goes into Barry's room. She asks him about the drugs that he used and she says to him that she used to have a drug problem. Well, a weed problem, but weed is way too light for her and now she does a lot of stronger drugs. One of them that she does is a combination of LSD and ecstasy. She also asks about Gary's guitar and she asks him to play a song for her. So she lies on the bed while Barry plays the guitar and sings for her. Once she has left, Barry calls the vet. She says that um, Yona needs to have an operation in Port Elizabeth and it will not cost 6,000 Rand but 8,000 Rand so it's 2,000 Rand more expensive. When he tells Paul this, Paul says that they need to kill Yona but Barry says that he has the money or he will come up with the money even if Paul will not pay for it. Barry then talks to Paul next and he says that he is going to take Yona to the vet the next day. Paul ends up going to the doctor because he has a stomach ache and the doctor says that it is food poisoning. But obviously Barry knows that it is because he was drinking and there was rat poisoning in the brandy. Barry feels bad about this but he also wishes that the rat poisoning had made Paul much more sick. So it's the next day and Barry is taken to Barry is taking Yona to the vet and he first of all goes to Volfi, so the pawn shop and he gets 2,000 Rand for his medals and his cricket bat. So those are the next two things that he sells. He also takes another 2,000 Rand out of his savings account. And he is prepared to sell his guitar in order to save Yona's life. So just to know about the Cape of St. Francis, um, this is where Barry's is staying. This is the land where Paul has his house. And he finds out that the boy since actually used to own the land in the past. So the boy that is wearing his clothes, his name is Philly and he comes from the Boyson's family. And his family used to own the land that they are living on in the past. When he is um, at the house, Olga invites him to go look at the rocks with her. She shows him many different things, one of them being a red octopus, which is the same color as her toenails. This shows that she really likes red things. Um, Barry's is also very aware of the physical effect that she has on his body 
and Olga begins to flirt with him. She takes his shirt off and rubs her hands against his chest. Barry's plays with her hair and whispers her name, but nothing actually happens and they go back to the house. She says that, all, that her herself and Steph are staying by Paul's house for two days because the two men are working on the generator because it is broken. There are a couple things that Paul does that shows that he really does care about Barry's. The one thing is that he buys a new toilet, a modern one, to replace the old rural one that is outside. And he also pays Dr. Huckenden, so that is the vet. He pays the vet 2,000 rand for urine surgery because... Barry's had only paid 6,000 rand up until that point. But when he was in town for his stomach ache, when he went to go see the doctor, he also went to Dr. Huckenden and he asked about Jorana and ended up paying the difference that Barry's had not paid. But he did not tell Barry's that he paid. He just said that Dr. Huckenden had given him a discount. When Olga and Barry's get back to the house, they see that Steph has locked himself inside and will not answer. So Paul says that he will go find him. While he does that, Barrys asks Olga why she is with a man who abuses her. But she says that they had met in a medical hospital for the sick. So I think, I don't know if this is a rehab center or if it's like a um, mental hospital of some sort. But they are very dependent on one another because of this and how they met. Because obviously they met when they were both very vulnerable and they have stayed together since. She also warns him that she has a great sex appetite, so I think that may be one of her addictions, other than drugs. And Barry lies to her and says that he has already slept with Lizette. And he just says this in order to act big in front of her and to make out like he is older and more experienced than he actually is, obviously because he wants to impress her. Olga opens up to him and she tells him about how she grew up. So she grew up in Windhoek in Namibia and she came to Johannesburg in order to work. But that was the first place that she had done drugs. Paul comes back and he tells Barry that Steph was very angry with her and with him because he had seen Olga's naked body that one time when she was tanning. I'm not sure how he found out, but he did. And he says that that is the reason why he abused her because in his mind, she was unfaithful to him. So Barry ends up taking Yona on a walk just to get some air. And he tells Yoga, Yona about his struggle with drugs and how he was addicted and is addicted to weed. He thinks and he feels like Yona really understands him and he compares Yona to his best friend. And Yona is actually his best friend at the moment because he feels like he is telling him all about um, his struggles and Yona is just listening to him quietly and supporting him and not judging him. Then Barry goes to his house and sleeps, but when he wakes up, he sees that Yona's mouth is full of blood. He screams and he tries to find Paul, but Paul is drunk and cannot help him, just like in the past. So he has flashbacks of the past and Yona, I mean, Paul being the bad dad that he was, because Paul can't even wake up now to help Barry and to take Yona to the vet. So Barry takes himself and Yona to the vet in Paul's 4x4. Um, he, before he leaves, he slams his guitar against the wall because he is so angry with Paul. The vet examines Yona and tells Barry that she just, I mean, he got too much exercise. So that may have been from the walk that Barry took him on yesterday. And she also warns him that if Yona does get sick and if he carries on to get too much exercise, then the medical bills and the blood transfusion bills will be very expensive. So Barry needs to be more careful than he is now. Barry thanks her for the 2,000 rand discount that Paul said um, she gave him, but she tells him that she didn't give him a discount, and Paul actually just paid the um, difference. While Barry is driving home, he accidentally um, crashes the car into some rocks. So he goes outside the car to just um, investigate the damage that has been done, and he gets very sad. He calls Niku. This is one of the first times that he's called Niku since he's been at Paul's house. She lets him know that the Verkeersman, so the man that Theo hit, has actually passed away. Barry feels very bad about this now and he is near tears. Now Theo is charged with manslaughter because the man has actually died. Barry continues to drive the rest of the way home. 
Paul asks him why he drove all the way into town alone. But Barry says that just like in the past, Paul was drunk and could not help him. Vera, ba- um, Vera calls Barry's when he's at home and she asks about Butcher. So now Barry's is wondering how on earth does my mom know about this drug dealer named Butcher because he never told the police about Butcher. But this obviously means that Butcher is looking for Barry's mom and this is a threat to Barry's and he's basically saying that if the police find him, then he's going to hurt Barry's mom. Now Barry's gets very scared because he doesn't want anything to happen to his mom. Like something um, bad has already happened. The Fakir's man has already passed away. So he immediately calls Niku and he says that he is very bad. He's very... I'm scared that Butcher is going to hurt his mom. And that's when she tells him about Butcher and that he's a drug dealer. But then Neku says that she already knows about Butcher and they're going to catch him. And he will warn Vera about Butcher in order to, and also just make sure that she doesn't talk to him or meet with him anywhere. So Barrys asks Paul for a little bit of weed because now he's, feel, he's feeling very down and anxious because of the man that passed away. And because he is scared that his mom is in danger. But Paul says no and he reminds him that he is now 20 days clean. So he hasn't smoked weed or done any drugs in 20 days. And he warns warns him about what Captain Mefeka had said. Which was that if he does anything bad then he is going to be charged with criminal offences. But if he just behaves while he's at his dad's house, nothing bad will happen to him. And they won't charge him with, with anything. Then Barry sees Philly. So Philly tells him that he is giving back him back his clothes because his dad told him to. And Paul is sitting on the stoop with a pistol in his hand. So he's sitting on the stoop with a gun in his hand. And he says that someone had stolen his money while he was in the shops or while he went into town. Now he thinks that it was Philly because the workers said that they had seen him by the house when he was in town. And this was just because he was talking to Barry's, not because he was stealing the money. But Paul says that if he sees him again, that he will shoot him. Then Barry asks Paul about all the tattoos all over his body. And Paul says that he got them when he was in prison. He was a boxing champion while he was there and he got these tattoos as a symbol of that. Um, They all have different meanings, but that is one of them. And that his fellow prisoners respected him a lot because of that. Paul then shows Barry how the pistol works. Because he says that there's a lot of people who come by the house And there's obviously no security there, so if he needs to protect himself, he needs to use the gun. And a lot of the other people that that could come by the house may have knives. So Barry's does need some form of protection. Barry's then also looks at all the things that came back in his bag that Philly gave back. And he realizes that they all smell of weed. Um, 